All righty. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for being here tonight. My name is Matt Manns. I use he, him pronouns, and I am the Director of Student Services in the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. I am really, really excited that you're all here this evening. This is honestly one of my favorite times of year. You're coming to UVM. You're going to college. This is so cool. Um, and we're really, really excited to have you joining our programs here. We're really excited to get to know you a little bit better. Um, we're excited to help you get a draft of your fall schedule all set. Um, it's a really, really fun time for us to, to start getting to know you all um, in this incoming class. So thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule um, and we'll we'll get started here. As we move through the presentation tonight, you may have questions and that's great. Um, the best way to sort of type in your questions is actually to use the chat function, um, which you can use in the Teams. It'll be at the top of your Teams tab there. Um, so if you have questions, feel free to type them in as we move through the presentation. Um, and what we'll be doing is there are a couple folks from my office here in SEM Student Services who are monitoring the chat. And if it's a quick question that there's an easy answer to, um, they might just drop the answer to the question back to you in the chat. And if it's kind of a longer question that sort of deserves a little bit more nuanced of an answer, um, then we'll save those questions for the end of the presentation. And at that point, um, we'll have an opportunity to kind of run through any Q&A that you all might have. Um, so like I said, any questions that pop up, throw them in the chat. Um, and in the meantime, we'll, we'll kind of rock and roll. So like I said, my name is Matt Manns. I'm the Director of Student Services. Um, a couple folks who are here today on the call from Student Services are Michael Rose and Mary Lawman. They're going to be kind of in the background, like I said, monitoring the chat and making sure you get some questions answered as we move through the program. The rest of the team here in Student Services is Holly Fosher, who's our Career Readiness Coordinator, uh, Ann Cherenzelli, Michael Rose, Emma Squire, and Mary Lawman are our academic advisors, and those four are the folks who you're probably going to connect with um, most frequently in the coming days and weeks ahead, um, who are going to be able to help you out making sure that your schedule is, is all set for the fall semester. So there's the team. We're here to help and support you starting from now all the way through the rest of your time at UVM. So let's talk through the agenda for tonight so you have a sense of what to expect. Um, so we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about FERPA, which is a student privacy um, policy that we take very seriously here. I'm going to give you a refresher if you're um, unfamiliar with it about kind of the academic programs and the different majors that we offer in the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. I'm going to reintroduce you to student services, which I just mentioned the folks who are in student services, um, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about sort of the resources that we can provide you with. Uh, we'll talk through some strategies for academic success, and then we're going to start talking about some pretty tangible things that you can start doing to prepare for the next couple of weeks, and then we can go into sort of what, what your actual next steps are in terms of getting you rocking and rolling here in the fall semester. So like I said, I want to start with FERPA. So FERPA is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. And essentially what FERPA is, uh, is it's a policy that protects your right as a student to your student academic record. So FERPA essentially prevents anyone here in the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences from sharing anything related to your academic record outside of the college without your permission. Most frequently, this comes up if a friend or a family member or a guardian gives us a call and says, hey, I want to check in and see how my student is doing in this program. We're not actually able to give any information about your academic record without your permission. So if a parent calls us and says, hey, can I check in on my student's GPA or what their schedule is? That's not something that we can share, again, without, without your permission. So my hope tonight is that there's a lot of friends, a lot of family um, guardians who are on the call alongside students. Students, I hope you're here too, but I hope I hope your family and friends are here too. Um, anyone who is going to be a partner for you as you kind of move, move through your academic journey. Um, I hope they're on the call to get this background information. 
we we take this policy really seriously. Um, this is something that that we take seriously for a couple reasons. One, we think it's the right thing to do. But two, your academic journey at UVM it's starting. It's it's underway, and this is a journey that is really individual. It's something that you should have a lot of ownership over. It's something that um, we think is going to give you some structure as you move your way through your program. So it's something that we think will help build autonomy. It's something that um, we believe, again, your journey is your journey. We're here to help and support you. I hope you have a great support team that's also here to help and support you. Um, but it's really important that you're the one kind of driving the bus on, on what, what kind of academic experience you want to have during your time at UVM. If at any point you decide that, hey, I, I want to waive this FERPA privacy um, and I want to allow Matt or allow Anne or Mary or Michael, I want to allow them to have the opportunity to speak with a parent or speak with a friend about my academic record. At any point, if you want to waive that um, FERPA right, you can do that. You can come into our office, you can fill out a form and you can say, great, Matt, I want you to be able to talk to both my mom and dad about my academic record. I want you to be able to share my grades. I want you to be able to share my schedule. That's entirely your call. And we have forms that can help you do that. Um, but unless you unless you kind of come in to, to fill that form out with us, we're going to assume um, and kind of follow the guidance associated with FERPA. So I know I spent a little bit of time talking about that. I, I, I mentioned that again because we take it very seriously. We take your privacy very seriously as you make your way through this journey. OK, so let's talk a little bit more about the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, the college that you are joining here at UVM. So our college is kind of made up of three different buckets. So we think of our buckets in terms of engineering and physics, mathematics and statistics, and computer science. And the reason we start here with this, this kind of graphic is because realistically, as a student in the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, you're going to overlap pretty significantly. If you're majoring in mechanical engineering, you're going to take courses in mathematics and in statistics and in computer science. And we believe that the experience you get as a result of that is one that's very interdisciplinary. It gives you a chance to take courses both with students who are in your major and build that community, which is really important. But also it gives you the chance to, to connect with folks who might be in other majors, um, who might be majoring in mathematics and statistics and computer science. And realistically, we think that's going to make you a better student in your major because you've had a chance to interact with folks from other disciplines here in the college. And you'll have chances to interact with students in other disciplines around UVM as well. The other thing that we, we kind of feel strongly about with this is that our professors who are making decisions about your academics, who are planning courses, who are um, making changes to the curriculum, they're not doing so in a vacuum, right? They're doing so in a way that says, okay, how does the math department feel about us potentially changing this requirement in physics or this requirement in computer science? And it's that kind of thought partnership that we have in this college that I think leads to a pretty a pretty strong academic experience. So the programs themselves, you can see them listed up here. Hopefully your major is up here. And if you are an undecided major, that is wonderful. We're gonna be able to, to chat with you about um, what being an undecided major looks like in the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. But within our program, so we have programs in engineering, so we have a civil, environmental, electrical, mechanical, and biomedical engineering program. Those first five programs are what we call ABET accredited programs. So ABET is an organization that essentially looks at and certifies engineering programs across the country. And it certifies those in the sense that by the time a student graduates from a civil engineering program that is ABET accredited, that program essentially has prepared a student to be a practicing civil engineer upon graduation. So those first five programs are, are ABET accredited. The bottom two, engineering management and the Bachelor of Science in Engineering, are not ABET accredited very much by design. So what I mean by that is those programs have a little bit more flexibility 
in their curriculum. The engineering management program is essentially half engineering and half business. And the Bachelor of Science in Engineering is a program that gives students a lot of opportunities to choose the types of engineering classes they want to take. So because of that flexibility, those are not AVET accredited. One of the one of the strengths of those programs is that it gives students a little bit more control over the types of classes that they'll take. On the other side of the table here, we have our Bachelor of Science um, in Computer Science and a Bachelor of Science majoring in Computer Science and Information Systems. Two different programs. Uh, the BS in Computer Science is one that dives pretty deep into the field of computer science. And the Computer Science and Information Systems program is one that's essentially half computer science and half business. In the Mathematical Sciences umbrella, you have a pure math and a statistics major. And then we have a Bachelor of Science in Data Science, which functionally combines computer science, mathematics, and statistics. And we have a Bachelor of Science in Physics. And then at the bottom of the page, you can see all of the different minors and certificates that are housed within the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. Students don't need to pursue a minor in any of our programs except for mathematics and statistics. So if you're in mathematics and statistics, you'll need to do a minor. Our other majors allow and encourage students to do minors, but you're not required to do a minor. So I'm sharing all of this again because one of the things that we see across the first year is we see some uncertainty for students coming in. They say, OK, I know I want to do a program in this college, but I'm not sure if I want to do computer science or if I want to do mechanical engineering or if I want to do physics. That's OK. There's, a, there's time within this first year to sort of make changes to your schedule and make sure you're in a program that is the right fit for you. You'll do some work with your academic advisor in the coming days ahead, but also in the coming fall semester to help make sure that the program that you're selecting is the program that's the right fit for you. And you might decide after after a semester in the college that you want to switch from civil engineering to business. That's OK, too. Those are things that, again, not necessarily things you need to decide right now, but things that your advisor will be able to help you with over the years. OK, so let's talk a little bit about the Office of Student Services. So you saw our student services team at the start. So we will be the folks who help you with a great many things. So we're going to help you with kind of your professional, your academic and your career advising throughout your time here. One of the first and most fundamental things that we help you with is registration support. So we're going to help make sure every semester that you are signing up for the classes that you need to take in order to graduate from your program in four years. Or if you're choosing to take a little bit longer, if you're choosing to do a five year plan, we're the folks who are going to help you kind of map that out in a way that feels really productive for you. We're going to help connect you with different opportunities and with different resources on campus. So what I mean by that is a lot of times when a student comes in for academic advising, we'll spend some time talking about classes, but then we'll also make sure to refer you to a different office on campus that can give you the help and support that you need. So for example, I was a I was a Spanish major in college. Um, and so all of you who are starting um, at UVM this fall are at a higher level of math than I ever got to. But I might meet with a student who comes in and says, OK, Matt, I'm struggling in my calculus class this semester. Can we take a look at my homework together? And I'll say, I'm so glad that you came in to share that you're struggling, because what I can do is not help you right now because that looks super hard. But what I can do is I can help connect you with the tutoring center or I can help connect you with our math help sessions or I can talk to you about how you're going to go visit your professor during their office hours and the types of questions or the types of conversation you might want to have to get extra help. We in student services, we know those resources really, really well across campus. It's not your job to keep track of them all, but it is your job to come in and tell us when you're struggling. That's really important because often we won't know that you're struggling until you come in and say, hey, I'm not doing well in this class or I'm feeling overwhelmed by my course load or I'm feeling homesick or I'm feeling like I just need a little bit more support. That's that's a developable skill. That's something that you can work on. It's something that we expect out of you, the student, to come in and, and chat with us when you're struggling because that's the best way that we know how to connect you then with different resources for support. If you need to miss class um, for illness or a family emergency, you can get in touch with us. 
Any form or paperwork that requires the Dean's signature is something that we can help you with. You don't actually need to go to the Dean directly. Um, we will monitor your academic progress and make sure that you're staying in good academic standing with us. Um, and then at any point, if you need to take um, an, a withdrawal from a course, if you need to take an incomplete from a course, um, if you need to substitute one course for another course in your degree, again, those are not things that we expect you to know how to do right off the bat. They're all things that we can help you with. Biggest thing I can kind of share if you remember nothing else from this presentation down the road, which you might not because there's a lot of information to take in and you're going to be taking in a lot of information over the coming days and weeks and months ahead. What I hope you remember more than anything else is that at any point during your time at UVM, if you're struggling, if you need help, even if it's not about academic support, might be struggling with a roommate, might be navigating a family emergency at home and you want to talk to somebody about it, please, please always come into student services. We are always available to chat with you. We can problem solve alongside you, um, but please come in and talk with us at any point if you need help. That is our primary job is to help you navigate this time at UVM. So again, if you remember nothing else, remember student services is here to help and support you as you move your way through your time at UVM. Okay, so a little bit about academic advising. So one of the one of the things that will happen uh, over the coming weeks is you will be assigned a professional academic advisor prior to the start of the fall semester. You have likely heard from your academic advisor at this point already because we've reached out to invite you to connect over the next couple weeks at some point to talk about your fall schedule. This person will likely be your academic advisor throughout your entire first year. And what we suggest is that you meet with your advisor regularly. You will be required to do this at least once a semester, but we really encourage you to do it multiple times throughout the semester. It helps us get to know you a little bit better. Um, it helps you build a relationship that hopefully we can then use to connect you with different opportunities and different resources for support. Um, so build that relationship. It's something that you can actively work on throughout your time at UVM. So our office serves and supports all students in the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. So at any point during your time, you can come back to us, you can chat with us. But as you move from your first year to your sophomore year, you'll be paired with a faculty advisor in your specific major. So if you're majoring in data science, going into your sophomore year, you'll transition from an advisor in STEM student services to an advisor in data science, a faculty, a professor, in data science. And that's a great thing because you're going to start getting into the types of courses and start having the types of questions that are really best served by a faculty advisor who's an expert in that field. So we think that model works really well, but again, you can always come back and chat with us um, and have some questions answered. The other piece that I want to share about the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences is our academic standards. So in order to stay in good academic standing in the college, students need to maintain a grade point average, a GPA of a 2.0. 2.0 is a C average or higher. Now, one thing to note is that while a 2.0 is our threshold to be in good academic standing, you might have financial aid or scholarships that have different academic standards. So just keep that in mind. You might have a scholarship that requires you to maintain a 3.0 GPA. So if you have a 2.8 GPA, you'll still be in good standing with us here in SEMS, but you might not you might not be eligible for that scholarship anymore. We review academic standing at the end of each fall and each spring semester, and a student who falls below that 2.0 GPA mark, semester or cumulative GPA. So semester GPA is your grade point average made up of just the classes during a specific semester and your cumulative GPA is made up of all of the grades that you've earned during your time at UVM. So if either of those falls below a 2.0, then you're placed on academic trial. Academic trial is not punitive. It is very much designed as an early warning system that says, okay, this semester didn't go as well as you probably wanted it to. So let's make sure that we connect so that we can talk through 
what are we going to do differently? What are the things that we might want to change or we might want to consider going into the next semester to make sure that you get back in good academic standing, right? That's something that all students who are on trial will come in and chat with an advisor about. Students are dismissed from the college and from the university if they have two consecutive semesters with a semester GPA below a 2.0, or if they have three consecutive semesters with a cumulative GPA below a 2.0. If that's the case, again, you'll work with an advisor who will clarify kind of what the dismissal process looks like, what the appeal process looks like, what the return to UVM looks like. Again, through all of that, you're going to have help and support. But again, we mentioned this early on to make sure that it's clear and, and outlined up front for you all. A 2.0 is the minimum GPA you need to maintain to be in good academic standing. And then on the flip side, we have academic honors. So students are placed on the dean's list. That's awarded to full-time undergraduate students who have a cumulative GPA of not less than a 3.0, who are in the top 20% of each class. So class, by that we mean first year, sophomore, junior, or senior, not top 20% of your Calculus One class, for example. So the top 20% of students in each class is placed on the dean's list. And then, because I suspect there are some of you who are already thinking about graduating from UVM, students graduate with what we call Latin honors, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, or cum laude, if they're in the top 1% for summa cum laude, the, top, the following 3% will be magna cum laude, and the next 6% of our graduating class receive the Latin honor cum laude. Those are calculated based on all of the grades that students receive at UVM. So if you have transfer credit from another institution, those are not factored into Latin honors. It's just the grades that you've earned at UVM. OK, so what are some strategies that we see successful students enact in order to in order to find that academic success? So one of the biggest things that we talk about with students is that you need to go to class. Go to class, be on time, make sure you are in your seat at the start of the class. Different classes at UVM are going to have different attendance policies. <clears throat> so you're going to have some classes, excuse me, you're going to have some classes that don't take attendance. You're going to have others that require attendance at all every single session in order to get full marks for the class. Regardless of the attendance policy, the most successful thing that students can do is go to class. Next up, one of the things we really strongly encourage students to do is err on the side of formality and written and oral communication. So what we mean by that is if you're sending an email to your professor, address it as dear Dr. So-and-so, dear Professor So-and-so. It is way easier to start at that formal level and have somebody say, oh, you're welcome to call me by my first name. That's best case scenario. We have some students who I've received a couple of forwarded emails from professors who've received emails that start, hey dude, or what's up? I'm a student in your calc class, right? This is not a great first impression in a written communication. So err on the side of formality, start start formal, and again, let your professor dictate um, if they prefer to be called doctor or professor so-and-so, um, or if you're welcome to call them by their first name. Build a relationship with your advisor and your faculty members. Stop into the office hours that your professors offer. Stop into student services. We have drop-in advising hours where students can just stop in. You can make appointments with us. The world is your oyster in terms of connecting with your advisor. Um, send some emails too. I think it's it's really great to build relationships. I think it helps with your success as you move through your time at UVM, but there's some practical benefits also. If you ever need to request a letter of recommendation, somebody who knows you, somebody who you have built a relationship with is gonna write a much better letter of recommendation than somebody who has only met you once or twice, right? 
Communication with your faculty members is, is super important. If you do need to miss class for some reason, again, get in touch with your advisor or get in touch with your professor directly. That sort of communication is really important so that they know, hey, I'm really invested in this class. I'm really invested in my success here. I just had something pop up that I'm not able to make it to class today. That is, that's really critical. If you miss an assignment and a professor follows up with you, you should be following back up with that professor right away. Use good classroom etiquette. So if you need to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom, do it quietly, don't disrupt. Get off your phone in class, make sure that you're not checking your phone during class. It's all stuff that you know well at this point. Um, but again, it's really, uh, it's really important to have that, that classroom etiquette. And then last and most certainly not least, get into a habit of checking your UVM email. That says daily, you should actually be checking it multiple times a day once the semester starts. During the summer, daily is great, um, but once the semester starts, you should be checking your email multiple times a day. That is the primary way that UVM is gonna get in touch with you. So make sure that you make a point to check your email. And then while you're here, take advantage of opportunities. So I mentioned that Holly Fosher is our career readiness coordinator. Holly is a tremendous resource. So she's gonna connect with you early on in your first semester to start brainstorming, hey, how are you gonna, how are you gonna prepare for the career that comes after this? Let's talk about internships. Let's talk about research that you can engage in. And let's make sure you're getting paid for all of those. Um, don't wait until your senior year to take advantage of these opportunities and services. You really want to start connecting with them early. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to be the very first day of the semester, but during your first semester, you should make a point to be connecting with these, to be researching, okay, what do I want to do after I graduate and how do I want to get there? There's a lot of help along the way to, to let you do that. And you don't, you don't need to know what that final answer is right now, but Get involved with a club, get involved with research, get involved with an internship. Again, these are things you can start doing early um, or start thinking about early that might help you figure out as much what you don't want to do as what you do want to do, right? If you wait to get um, an experience like this until your senior year, you might find out, hey, I don't, I don't love doing this, but you'll have less time to figure out what you do love. Um, study abroad. I can't push that one enough. That is such a wonderful, wonderful life experience. Um, it is unique. It is really hard to replicate after you after you leave. Um, so study abroad, we encourage it. Come, come chat with an advisor and come chat with an advisor early during your first semester so we can start planning out when and where um, that might take place. So, I mentioned that there are clubs and organizations. So within the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences itself, we have over 20 specific clubs. Now UVM itself has hundreds of student clubs and organizations. So if you find something that you're really interested in that's in SEMS, awesome. Do it and do it, do it wholeheartedly. If you find something that you're really interested that's not in SEMS, awesome. That's just as great, but we wanna get you involved for a lot of reasons. But I think one of the biggest reasons, especially in your first year, that's where you're going to make your friends. That's where you're going to build your community and make connections with other students. Um, and that's going to make your time at UVM just really, really enjoyable. So here's a full list of the SEMS clubs and organizations. So you can see all sorts of different options. There's the Space Club. There's the Math and Statistics Club, the Glass Blowing Club. There's the Computer Science Crew. There's OSTEM, which is the Out in STEM Club. There's NSBE, which is the National Society of Black Engineers. I mean, there is a lot of stuff that you can get involved in. And like I said, we hope you do. Um, these are really cool, cool organizations where you can connect with some like-minded folks um, and, and make your way through your time at UVM in a really, really awesome way. And then, like I said, at UVM, there's all sorts of different ways to get involved. So there's club and intramural sports, there's the outing club, ski and snowboard, there's fraternity and sorority life, there's religious groups and identity and affinity groups and on and on and on. So find your peeps, get connected, get involved. Um, and then Burlington itself is a wonderful place to go to school. So there's great volunteer opportunities in the community. There's great music. I play in a men's sports league that has a couple of UVM students. And so if you are a soccer player, 
please don't join that group because you are exceptionally fit and athletic compared to the aging former athletes that make up the bulk of my soccer league. So skip that one, go hiking, go swimming, um, get out into the mountains and into the lakes and rivers. Uh, it's really a wonderful place in Burlington and in and around the area. All right, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and start talking about your fall semester. So for every single major in the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, math is one of your keys to success. So whether you're majoring in mathematics and statistics or whether you're majoring in computer science or physics or engineering, math is really, really critical. And so one of the things on your new student checklist that many of you have had a chance to do already, which is great, if you have not had a chance to do this yet, you should try to do it as soon as possible, is taking the math placement assessment. The math placement assessment helps you and helps us make sure you're ready to roll in either calculus one or pre-calculus. It's a really critical test because if you score really high and it says you're ready for calculus one awesome if you score below a 70 uh, a score of 75 or lower that's really important information because we want to make sure that you're starting in the math class that's going to set you up for success if you take the math placement assessment and you score below a 76 you can retake it up to four additional times and the benefit of retaking it is you'll actually have some learning modules along the way that allow you to kind of refresh or um, review some material that you might not have done well on in that math placement assessment. So if you do wind up scoring below uh, 76, so a score of 75 or below, in most majors, we strongly recommend that you think about taking pre-calculus this summer. Starting in pre-calc in the fall is absolutely an option. It is something that a lot of our students do and do it really successfully, but it can have a pretty significant impact on your future course planning. Again, more for some majors than others, but what we what we really strongly suggest is if you do wind up below a 76, chat with your advisor, connect with the person um, who has reached out to you about your fall academic advising meeting so that we can discuss some options with you and start start planning for your degree progression. One option, you can take pre-calc at the um, online over the summer through UVM. That's totally an option. That starts July 1st. You could also do pre-calc at a local community college. So if you have a school or institution near you where you want to take pre-calc, great. Check in with us and we can help make sure that it's a good, a good course, a good fit. We get a lot of questions about AP, Advanced Placement Credit. Scores arrive in early to mid-August. Last year, they were a little bit before that. They arrived in late July. So if you are a student who is bringing in AP credit, as soon as we get those scores sent to us in late July, we'll start contacting you. And if those scores give you UVM credit for courses, what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, congratulations. It looks like you earned AP credit for chemistry. You're signed up for chemistry this fall let's talk about making an adjustment. Or maybe you want to retake chemistry because you feel like you did great on the test but didn't actually learn the material. That's all stuff that we're going to reach out and we're going to work with you individually. So if you have questions about AP now, hang tight. We'll get the full set of scores in late July or early August, and we'll follow up with you individually at that point to talk about how your specific scores will impact your fall schedule, kind of how you can use the credit what credit you've earned, and so on. So the other piece uh, I want to mention here is that laptops are required of all students in the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences. So students will be using this laptop throughout their four years. Many of the courses that our students will take during their time at UVM requires them to bring their laptop to class um, so that you're kind of actively learning the course that you're you're working on. So we've outlined some recommendations for laptop requirements and it's outlined by major. This is a QR code that you can scan if you're watching this on your phone. Um, you can also just go to uvm.edu slash SEMS slash computer dash services. Now the caveat that I will mention 
we were actually working with our IT department this afternoon. And so the website is going to be fully up to date tomorrow. So if you're looking at the site right now on your phones or on your computer, bookmark it and check it again by the end of the day tomorrow. It should be up to date. The laptops that are currently on that website are last year's versions. And there's a couple of changes that have gone through. So bookmark the site, it'll be up to date um, end of day tomorrow. But again, laptops are required. The minimum specifications will be up to date on that website tomorrow. Cool. Okay, so what are, what are your next steps? What is gonna happen over the next couple of weeks? So we, and by we, I mean the University of Vermont and us here in SEMS Student Services, what we have done in preparation for your advising appointment that's gonna happen some point during your next couple of weeks, we have placed students into, in some cases, all of the courses that they need for the fall. In some other cases, we've placed you into a couple of classes that you need to take in the fall for your major. And so we have kind of jump-started the registration process for you. The result of that is that when you meet with an academic advisor over the next couple of weeks, you are either going to need to add a course or two, or you might even be in a major where we've placed you into all of the classes that you need for your fall schedule. So we've done that to kind of make it a little bit easier for you the first time around so that you don't have to try to build your entire schedule from scratch. At this point, all of you should have received an email from an academic advisor inviting you to connect to talk about your fall schedule. That should have come to your UVM email address. So if you haven't yet started checking your UVM email address, please check that. Respond to that invitation to connect for an academic advising appointment. And if you're finding times that don't work or if you're having trouble scheduling it, just respond to that email and the advisor who reached out will be able to work with you to find out some alternate options. If you're a transfer student, and by transfer student, what I mean is that you might be a student who started at another institution and who transferred to UVM, your process is going to look a little bit different. You're gonna have an individual advising appointment and you and your advisor should be in touch um, to set that up to help make sure your schedule is gonna be set, taking into account the courses and credit that you've already earned. So to prepare for this advising appointment, make sure that you've either taken or retaken the math placement assessment and make sure you've done that at least one day before your advising appointment. I would say do it this week to make sure you've done it in time. Every student joining UVM for the fall semester has what we call a registration hold on your account. And the registration hold that's on your account prevents you from being able to make any changes to your course schedule until you meet with your academic advisor. We do that for a couple of reasons, but one of the biggest reasons that we do that is because we will release new seats in classes over the next couple of weeks. And so if you wind up meeting with your advisor for the first time in late June or early July, you're gonna have the same opportunity to sign up for classes as somebody who meets with an advisor next week or the week after, right? So we do that deliberately knowing that we're gonna be meeting with folks over the next couple of weeks and knowing that we wanna make sure the folks meeting at the end of that kind of window have the same opportunity to register as folks meeting at the early part of that opportunity, um, early part of that window. And then on July 8th, that advising hold, um, that registration hold is removed and students can kind of freely make changes to their schedule starting at July 8th. Now, when I say freely make changes to your schedule, I would, invite you before you make any changes to your schedule to speak with your advisor. Um, it can be really easy to start moving things around and get out of the courses that you really need to be enrolled in for the fall, right? So good advice here is always make sure that you are talking with your academic advisor before moving courses around. And then the other thing that I feel is really important to mention here is that we work all summer. We are around and available throughout the summer to work with you about any other scheduling questions that you have, to work with you about AP credit or transfer credit or dual enrollment credit or IB credit. We don't stop working during the summer, so we are around to help and support you. It can be a little overwhelming 
at the start to sort of work through the registration window. Again, my advice would be, don't worry about it. We're gonna help make sure that you are all set. So if it feels a little stressful or a little bit overwhelming, your advisor is there to kind of help and support you throughout the next couple of weeks and months to make sure that by the time the fall semester starts, you're in exactly what you need to be in. Alrighty, that was it for me. So I would invite you all now to connect with us on Instagram. If you have Instagram, feel free to follow along. Um, we'll post some cool things throughout the throughout the school year on the Instagram account. If you have any questions at any point, you can email us at sems.student.services at uvm.edu. You can call us at 802-656-3392. You can email your individual academic advisor. You can check us out on the web. So there are lots of ways to, to get in touch with us and we're more than happy to chat at any point. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now for a second so that I can head into the chat and see what sort of what sort of questions came through. So Michael, Mary, any questions coming through from folks in the chat that I might have missed? No, yeah. so there was one question and Michael's able to answer that about the curriculum check sheets. Awesome, wonderful, cool. Well, folks, we're gonna stay on for another couple of minutes as long as you have questions. So at this point, if you if, if I covered everything, great. Um, I suspect you might have some questions. So like I said, please feel free to type those questions into the chat or we're all friends here. If you wanna unmute yourself momentarily and ask your question, I'm, I'm more than happy to respond at this point. So like I said, we'll, we'll hang out. If folks do not have questions, you're welcome to sign off at this point. And we really appreciate you being here. We are, like I said, really, really excited. This is a fun time of year for us. Really looking forward to working with you over the next couple of weeks and months and years. Um, and welcome to SEMS. Like I said, we're hanging out for other questions, so please keep them coming if you have them. Oh, great question. Okay, I saw this one come through the chat. So when creating the draft schedule, are last year's AP exam scores put into consideration or should we discuss that during our course registration appointment? You should definitely discuss that during your course registration appointment. It depends. Sometimes last year's AP scores are already on a student's record. And if there's a score that's already on your record that might impact your fall schedule, we might have that conversation with you initially during your June or early July advising appointment. Um, but many times, even if a student took AP credit or has AP scores from two years ago, they might not yet be on a student's record. And in that case, we'll just wait to do kind of the full conversation once all of your AP scores come in. Right, if you're doing biomedical engineering with the intention of going to med school, how will the student and student services collaborate to make going to med school possible? That is a really good question. Um, it is specific, but I bet you're not the only one who's wondering about that. Um, so we work really closely with an advisor in the Career Center who's kind of the pre-med advisor. So going, going pre-med is not an official track at UVM. It's not something that you declare, but going pre-med essentially is making sure that you are taking courses that prepare you to go to med school after graduation. And so we'll work with students who are interested in the pre-med option to make sure that you're putting those courses into your schedule throughout your four years. Biomedical engineering is the major that kind of we most often see students interested in going pre-med. And so we actually have sort of a set track of courses, knowing what med schools are looking for and fitting those into a four-year plan for biomedical engineering. Uh, college credits earned in high school, yeah, that's the same answer. So if those are on your record already by the time we meet with you, um, we'll discuss them. And if they're not yet on your record, we'll we'll make sure to tell you how to make sure those get on your record. Um, and then we'll have that conversation later this summer. 
Are course registration appointments and advising appointments separate? Nope, they're the same thing. I've just been throwing around two different words for the same same thing. So the course registration appointment and the advising appointment are the exact same thing. Those are the things that you, uh, that, that appointment is what you should have received an email from your academic advisor about. Um, okay, most recent question. I switched into SEMS after I'd already received an email from my original college. So I never received a link to register for courses within SEMS. What can I do about that? We'll take care of you. Um, we'll make sure that you get an email invitation in the next day. Um, I've taken a note of your of your net ID, so we will make sure that you have have an outreach um, very shortly. Awesome questions, y'all. What else? What do you have for us? Matt, there was another question in the chat um, about background research they should be doing before their advising appointment. Is there a catalog to look through or how familiar should they become with the freshman courses prior to the advising? Awesome. Another great question. I think the, the short answer is you, you don't need to do any sort of research if you don't want to. Um, we are, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna cover the information that you need to know during that advising appointment. Um, if you would like to, you're welcome to kind of explore the website. You're welcome to look into our programs in a little bit more detail. But there's no expectation um, or even suggestion that you do that. Like I said, we're gonna make sure that in those meetings that we have with you. We're covering all of the information that you need to know. Yeah. Thanks, Mary, for highlighting that. Awesome. OK, like I said, we'll, we'll stick on for another couple of minutes. Um, thank you again for the questions. And if you have other questions in the next couple minutes, let us know. You're welcome, Cameron. Great question about math. So does it matter the level of math you take for certain majors in SEMS? For example, if I go into freshman year on a lower level than other people, will I be behind? I, I don't think of it necessarily as being behind um, because what I think often, what often happens, for example, if a student wants to, wants to uh, or is advised to take pre-calculus in their first semester, that's likely more beneficial to them than trying to take calculus one and not being prepared for it. And so I, I don't really think of behind or ahead. I, I kind of use the expression off cycle um, because while many students in their first semester will be starting in Calc 1, many others will be starting in pre-Calc. Some might be starting in Calc 2 or Calc 3. So all of that's just to say, you know, everybody's journey is kind of their own academic journey. It doesn't necessarily put you behind. In some majors, it might impact this, the schedule that you take in spring of your first year. It might be something where we suggest doing a summer course after your first year. Um, so again, that's all stuff. It depends on the major. It depends on any other credit that you might be bringing in. Um, all stuff that your advisor will be happy to help you with. How long does the math placement test usually take? Uh, that's a great question. I think it depends on how quickly you take exams in general. For some folks, it's relatively short. For others, it's a little bit longer. Um, Michael, Mary, do either of you remember about, I, I would say it's about 45 minutes or an hour. Um, not sure if Michael or Mary have, have different experience with that. And then uh, another question, if you took AP BC Calc in high school, do you have to take the MPA? Yep, everybody has to take the math placement assessment. So whether you took BC, whether you took AB, um, whether you have transfer credit coming in for Calc 1 and Calc 2 from another institution, everybody still needs to take the math placement assessment. Yep. Great question. Thank you, Michael. 60 to 90 minutes.
Alrighty. There are no other questions at this point. We're going to go ahead and end things up. For those of you who are still on, thanks again. Really was, was great chatting with you tonight. Um, looking forward to working with you. Have a great evening, everybody.